Are you interested in growing coconuts, but you live nowhere close to the coast? Perhaps you even live a little higher in elevation. Well, in order to grow coconuts in these situations, it takes a little bit more work on your part. And I'm going to show you how to grow healthy coconuts that produce fruit, even when you're miles from the coast or a thousand feet in elevation. So let's dive in. Aloha everybody, this is Sean with Homestead in Hawaii. It is a beautiful morning here, just before sun is about to rise over the horizon. I'm in my garden to gather up our first ingredient for making our fermented seawater to add to our coconut trees. And that first ingredient, we're gonna make a concoction called fermented plant juice. And today we're gonna to use comfrey. It's recommended that, they, that you use one type of plant, but any plant really can do you want to find a plant that has the the properties that you want to attract so comfrey is able to bring up lots of vital minerals from deep down in the ground and we want to be able to include these minerals with our coconut tree other plants can be like perennial peanut nitrogen fixers like that or these other weeds that just are fast growing if you want to try and increase the growth of your plants but today we're gonna to focus on the comfrey and we're gonna start by making that fermented plant juice. And then we're gonna add it to our fermented seawater and make a big old concoction like that to be able to feed our coconut trees and make them as healthy as they can possibly be. We're gonna start by harvesting a bunch of leaves of this comfrey plant. It depends on how much you wanna make is how much you wanna harvest, but we're gonna get Enough for a small batch, nothing too big here today. So we're not gonna harvest this whole plant today. So with whatever plant material you gathered, you wanna just start twisting and mashing the plant into a bucket, trying to work the juices out of the plant. Just squeeze and mash and twist and grind. Do whatever you can to try and encourage the juices to come out of this plant. You can see that the plant is starting to really look a little wet. Moisture is starting to come out of the comfrey here. It's really getting ground down now. Now we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of sugar and then mix the sugar and the comfrey or whatever plant you have gathered and kind of work that sugar into the fibers of the plant, getting the juices out see that it's starting to get a little wet down there in the bucket. The sugar helps dry out the enzymes from the plant and pretty soon we'll have some nice rich juice that we're going to be able to use for our fermented plant juice. You can see it dripping there in the bucket. Once we're done getting the juices out of the comfrey, we're going to press it down into the bottom of the bucket and then sprinkle a layer of sugar all across the top of that. And then we're gonna leave it out for about an hour. Once you're done with that, just put a cloth over the bucket and leave it out until you're ready for the next step in one hour. So it's been about an hour. We're gonna come in. Oh, and you can see the juice is really coming out of that now. And give it a little more of a mix. I like to weigh it down even more at this point by putting this ba a bag inside and then we're going to fill it with water. So we're going to leave that bucket full of water weighing down our fermented comfrey down below for about two, three days. We're going to let it ferment a little and then we'll be ready to finish up this fermented plant juice that then we could add into our fermented seawater. All right, it's been a couple days of this fermented plant juice sitting here and fermenting and it's doing its thing. So let's go ahead and, and take it all out. See what we have to work with. You can see that black goo down there. That's all the juices from the plants being sucked out by the sugars. And now we have a rich concoction of fermented goodness that we're gonna feed our plants. We won't need a lot of this 
fermented plant juice to be put into our fermented seawater concoction. So we'll have a lot of it left over for future projects or just spraying in the yard, just straight, up, straight as fermented plant juice. This is a great product directly as it is right now. But let's transform it into fermented seawater so that our coconuts can get a little bit more of a boost around here. Before we get going, adding the seawater with the fermented plant juice we just made, we're gonna make sort of a, an oat wash. You can also do this with rice or any real starchy product, potatoes probably. You're creating a, a, a starch here that the microbes inside the fermented plant juice and seawater will be able to eat up and to be able to get activated. And there you can see the water turning white. If we want to, we can squeeze out some of the oats, begin to filter it out. You have a cheesecloth, that's great. We're just gonna give this oatmeal to our chickens. So it's gonna be just, just fine to throw out. Okay, so we're gonna make our fermented seawater in this bucket here. First thing we're gonna do is fill it up with some seawater. And I collected this just along the shore at a beach in Hilo. We'll give it a little rinse. And it, you know, it's good to get the water close to shore. It has less of a salt content. And with everything here that we're making, it's all going to be watered down. So a little bit goes a long way. So we're just going to strain about maybe a quarter cup of this liquid inside. And this, this stuff here really fuels the microbes that are going to be forming inside of this concoction and it's the microbial life that we're trying to increase here guys this is what's gonna it's the invisible worker army for your garden and now lastly so we're gonna strain off about three tablespoons of fermented plant juice into here you can see that fermented plant juice is like a a thick syrup so go ahead and stir all that up this is what it starts to look like after a while that's our mix and we're gonna let this sit for a couple days I'm gonna put a little cloth over it and leave it in my bathroom where it can sit free from the rain so it doesn't get contaminated and within uh, two to three days, it should be ready. I actually have some ready right here. Let's see if you can see it. Here's a fermented plant juice that we made already the other day. And you can see how the bubbles have formed on the surface of the seawater here. And it's about ready to use. All we're gonna do is we're gonna water it down about 30 to one or 50 to one, depending on the ratio that you're looking for. You can just spray it on the coconut trees or just water it into the soil. However you want to use it to feed your coconuts, that'll, that'll work for it. So let's go ahead and get this out onto the plants right now. All right, guys, there you have it, fermented seawater. That's gonna be how you can help your coconuts thrive away from the coast and at higher elevations. Now, it's not always gonna work. Sometimes your coconuts just don't wanna do it. They really wanna be by the coast. But for some of them, it's gonna happen. I've got coconuts growing on my trees. I'm at a little more than 800 feet in elevation where I'm at. It rains all the time and we're far from the coast. I've been applying this seawater application for a couple years now and finally I've really seen a response from my trees and I'm having actual coconuts 
growing for the first time. And this time we're actually gonna have a real harvest. So I'm really excited about, about that. I really feel like the fermented seawater has made a difference here. I highly recommend you adding fermented seawater to your regime if you're planting coconuts away from the coast or at higher elevations so that perhaps one day you could have coconuts of your very own growing on your property, which is really exciting, isn't it? We all wanna be growing more food and why not grow one of the most useful plants in the world? Beyond just the, the food, the coconuts that you can eat, the palms are great for thatching, which I hope to build out of it in a tree house that I'm working on. And the meat could be made into milk. It's a high in fat food that's great to have on the homestead. And it's just overall something that just everyone enjoys. A coconut in paradise, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you like this video. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. It really helps. And please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. If you've been making any sort of natural farming implements of your own. And, you know, I may have gotten some things wrong. I'm not a purist when it comes to natural farming but I take some of the essence of what I've learned and it seems to have been working. So thanks for watching. Till next time, everyone. Ahoy ho!